Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Welcome, welcome brothers and sisters, welcome brethren, welcome friends, welcome all viewers, them that are watching and listening in on Covenant Renewal Altar Ministries Facebook uh, Live and also on YouTube. We thank you so much for joining us. We are uh, coming for another session of our Bible study a Bible study at Covenant Renewal Altar Ministry. So before we begin our Bible study today, uh, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you thanks and glory. You've been so gracious to us, my Father. We surrender to you, Jehovah God, that even as we study your word, take us deeper, my Father. Give us the intimate power that comes from this word, that we may draw from this word, that we may abide in this word, we may live this word. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray for the grace of understanding. We, grave, we pray for the grace of interpretation, the spirit of revelation. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord God, this word will work for us, in us, and with us. For the glory and honor of your name. Father, I pray for them that are watching, them that are listening. Uh, Father God, them that will be joining us later, them that are with us here, Jehovah God. I pray, Jehovah, for your grace, for your power, for your anointing of understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. And also for the grace of, of obedience to this word. In the mighty name of Jesus, we bless you, Lord. We hide in your blood. We hide in your Holy Spirit, oh God. We hide in the Son of God. That, Lord, from here, we will tap from you. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise. We give you thanks because you are the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for joining us once again. Thank you so much. God bless you. Uh, we will be continuing with our Bible study from the book of 1 Thessalonians. We started off in the uh, last session, the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter number 1. And today we will be doing uh, verse, verse 6 to, number, uh, to verse number 10. In the last session we did uh, study uh, verse number 1 to number 5. And today we will be doing from number 6 to number 10 of chapter number 1 of the book of 1 Thessalonians, one of the letters that Paul wrote to the church at Thessalonica, the church uh, in the city of Thessalonica, and we studied uh, at length about uh, the, the city of Thessalonica, and we saw that uh, this environment was so hostile, but in spite of that, that the church grew, that Paul preached the gospel in spite of the persecutions, in spite of the, the hostility, in spite of the idolatry, in spite of the, 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 uh, the, the accusations and uh, fights from even the Jews who are supposed to be uh, uh, helping to spread this gospel. In spite of all that, the church was, was planted and the church grew and Paul was writing to, to this church. And we also studied that uh, it was just established within three weeks, within three Sabbath days, that Paul was in Thessalonica, a city that uh, 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 was and uh, is divinely lo uh, located along the Ignatian Way on a main road or a main Roman road. And we saw that uh, this city also had a seaport. It was a very active city. It was a very vibrant city. And it was also a very strategic city, uh, both uh, commercially and also spiritually, as we will continue seeing. And Paul had written to the Thessalonians, uh, uh, thanking them, thanking God for them because of their, uh, their, their work, their work that was produced by faith, by love, uh, by, by, by uh, their lab, labor of love. We saw all that. And so we, we went up to verse number five. But for uh, purposes of uh, putting into context, uh, maybe for them that have just, just joined us in this session, uh, I'll, read, I'll read from verse number four. But then we, are, we had already done four and five. So we will, uh, we will continue from verse number six. But uh, let me read starting from verse number four. Uh, verse number four, Paul says, For we know, brothers, loved by God, that he has chosen you, because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit, and with the deep conviction. You know how we lived among you for your sake. Verse number six. You became imitators of us, and of the Lord, 
in spite of severe suffering, you, you welcomed the message with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. And so you became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. The Lord's message rang out from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia. Your faith in God has become known everywhere. Therefore, we do not need to say anything about it. For they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. They tell how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. Hallelujah. Yes, Paul uh, continues describing this church of Thessalonians, the, Thess the, the church in this city of Thessalonica, uh, found in Macedonia, in one of the provinces. As we will continue, we'll realize that Achaia is also mentioned. But before we get there, remember Paul had explained uh, where we just ended uh, in the last session, that Paul had explained and said that we came to you not with simple words, not just with words, but we came to you with the, uh, uh, with the power the power was in the gospel, the power of the gospel, and also that uh, with the deep conviction of the Holy Spirit, as we have seen, as we see in verse 5, that because our gospel came to you, not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit, and with the deep conviction. You know how we lived among you for your sake. That Paul, Paul, Apostle Paul, is not just talking from nowhere, uh, He's telling them what they have testified, what they have witnessed, because he tells them that he lived among them. And they saw, they saw how him and other uh, ministers and other missionaries, fellow co-workers with Paul, how they lived among them. And they experienced that, that, uh, that power, that that power in the word of God, did not just end on the altar, did not just end in the synagogues, neither did it just end maybe in the, in the crusade ground of those days. But this power in the gospel, this uh, conviction of the Holy Spirit uh, was experienced even in their daily lifestyle, in their daily living, because uh, that as even they were living with the, with, the, with the Thessalonians, as Paul and the other missionaries lived in the midst of the, Thess the Thessalonians, the Thessalonians were able to see the lifestyle of, of Paul, how Paul was living together with the missionaries, their, their lifestyle, how they loved God, how they loved people, their kindness towards people, their, their dedication to serve God, their dedication to suffer for God, their dedication to speak without fear, their dedication to show forth the fruit of the Holy Spirit, their dedication to, 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 to work out their salvation with the fear and, tr and trembling, that Paul, uh, his life was so open to them. They were able to see. This life was open for everyone to see. It was not a hidden secret. It was not something that was confidential, that the salvation of Paul uh, and, and the ministry of Paul and the gospel of Paul, together with their fellow mi mi missionaries, was not a secret thing. It was not something that was was being done in a pit somewhere in spite of the persecutions in spite of the hostilities in spite of the threats in spite of the dangers that were there Paul uh, uh, lived among the Thessalonians and they saw the, uh, the lifestyle of someone who would, be, who, who would stand for the gospel. In other words, they saw Paul living worthy of the gospel, as he has said uh, in the letter, I think in Galatians, in the letter to, Gal to Galatians, that we should live worthy of the gospel. And so because of that, because of them seeing how uh, they lived worthy of the gospel, this is why now he goes on and he tells them in verse number six that you became imitators of us and of the Lord in spite of severe suffering. You welcomed the message uh, with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. So uh, I, uh, uh, 
uh, uh, Paul is saying that, yes, these people saw him. They saw how he had lived among them. Then now, he now testifies. He now bears witness that for sure, as he knew that as he was living, so were the Thessalonians living. In other words, his life was a discipleship of, his, of its own kind. That his life was an example. It was a role model. It was something to imitate as far as the gospel is concerned, as far as living worthy of the gospel is concerned. And so there was nothing for Paul to hide. That he was not living a double life. That some people could know him as a born again uh, and, and a minister of the gospel and others uh, could know him as somebody who was not born again. No, he did not live a double-minded life he did not live a double life. He lived a life that was a single life, a straight life. And so people were able to read him. Just as he, he would say, he would, he would talk to, to the Corinthians in Second Corinthians chapter number 3, verse 2 and 3. And he said that you yourselves are our letter written on our hearts, known and read by everyone. Verse 3, you show that you are a letter from Christ. The result of our ministry, hallelujah, the result of our ministry. That even these Corinthians, they became a, a letter to be read to everyone as a result of the ministry of Paul together with the other missionaries. How by the way Paul was living as an example that he was showing for the fruit, he was, he was walking the talk, he was, uh, he, he, he was preaching water and drinking water. He was not preaching water and take and drinking wine. Hallelujah. And so that's why Paul confidently says even to the Corinthians, uh, to the Corinthians, that you show that you are a letter from Christ, the result of our ministry, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts that uh, uh, Paul had shown them how he was living without having under, under dealings. But then uh, also now the Corinthians, and not just the Corinthians, just as we are seeing the Thessalonians, also lived according to how Paul was living. They imitated Christ, just the way we studied also in, uh, in Philippians 3, uh, uh, verse number 17, 18, I think there, uh, that Paul talking about uh, telling them that, uh, uh, that imitators, that follow our example, and also the example of them that are true believers or are genuine believers, are mature believers. And so the preaching of Paul was a full package. It was not just the preaching on the altar and it ends there. The preaching of Paul was both in action and in words, was both in lifestyle and in thought. Uh, uh, it, it was, it was a, a, a whole package. This is why Paul confidently and repeatedly tells uh, people, tells the church in the letters he has been uh, writing, uh, talk of uh, Co uh, Corinthians, talk of Thessalonians, talk of Philippians. He's telling them to imitate him as he imitates uh, uh, Christ. And so uh, uh, that this is a life uh, the Thessalonians have seen and they're living. So uh, Paul is happy. Paul, uh, we can say, is boasting in the Lord because he can see the life that he's living, he's seeing it in the others. So whatever he has fed the young believers, that's what he's seeing in them. He feels good that whatever he has been instructing, whatever he has been teaching them, and whatever he has been living, that is what he sees them living. This is why he commends and he appreciates the church of the Thessalonian, the Thessalonian church uh, telling them, uh, as we have seen in verse number 6, that you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for you welcomed the message in the midst of severe suffering with a joy given by the Holy Spirit. It is interesting here, uh, uh, as, as he mentioned, and, and, and just before that, I've just talked about in some other places where Paul talks about imitation or, or imitating the right thing or imitating having a, uh, being a good example and also imitating a good example, imitating others as they imitate Christ, imitating Paul as he imitates Christ. And we have said, he mentioned it in, in Philippians chapter number 3, verse number 17. 
16 yes uh, verse number 7 uh, verse number 8 let me see verse number 18 is it three or or, 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 eight or two? Let me just confirm there uh, for a moment. That verse is escaping, but uh, he's told them that follow my example, just as I have followed the the uh, uh, just as uh, others uh, uh, as we have been a good example to you and also follow the example of others anyway but also uh, if you see in uh, first corinthians chapter number 11 uh, verse 1 he is also talking about that that imitate me as i imitate christ follow um, my example as i follow the example of christ jesus that uh, in other words he's saying that whatever you observe from me you should leave that praise the lord and so this this uh, challenges us as, as brethren, as born-again Christians, uh, can someone, can you be proud for someone to imitate your behavior, to imitate your lifestyle, wherever you walk, that whatever you are living, can you be proud that your son or your daughter is imitating your lifestyle, that your brother or sister, the one that you have just uh, 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 preached to and they're born again, can you be proud in the Lord, can you boast in the Lord and say that they are following my example and the example that they are following, they are following the example of Christ, that even as they are following me, technically, or, or at the end of it, ultimately, they are following Christ Jesus. Uh, this calls for high integrity, a high level of integrity. Whether people are seeing you or people are not seeing you, it calls for a high level of integrity. At one time, Paul told uh, Timothy, he talked to the youth through Timothy in First Timothy chapter number uh, 4, verse number 12. And he told them that don't let any, anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. He even now, he's now uh, uh, listing uh, in the areas that we should be a good example, some of the areas that we need to be a good example, especially now he's speaking to the, to the youth uh, as he was talking to Timothy, Timothy was a young man, and as he's talking to him, he's talking to the church through Timothy. He's telling him that do not let, let anyone look down on, your, on, on you because you are young. Uh, you know, many, many times when we are quoting that scripture, we just end up there. We just say, ah, the Bible says, Paul says that do not let anyone overlook or look down upon your youth, and we end up there. But then he goes ahead. And he says in the same same sentence that but set an example for the believers in speech. So he's not telling uh, Timothy to go on defending himself physically, to go on just uh, 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 being, uh, being violent so that no one uh, does not look upon uh, his youth or no one does not look upon the youth. No, it is not a, a, a question of force, but it is a question of setting a good example. So you will, you will, you will overcome the battle uh, in this life as, as a youth. You will overcome the, 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 the notion where the youth are overlooked or the people who are young, even spiritually, are overlooked by setting a good example. And when you start setting a good example, you are, you are, you are growing mature. So people will want to emulate you. People will want to imita imitate you. And so this is a very good weapon that you don't have to struggle defending yourself with so many words, explaining yourself with so many words. It is simple. You don't want people to overlook you. Set a good example. And set a good example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. That's all. If you do that, you are growing mature and you will be a good example. And you will be imitating Christ himself. Because those are things that Christ himself uh, shows us, exhibits throughout his word. Yeah? And that's how you will not be overlooked. That's how people will not look down upon you. Eh? Just by setting a good example. Praise the Lord. 
And, and also, Paul had a similar word for Titus uh, in the book of Titus, uh, chapter number 2, verse 6 uh, and 7. It says, similarly, encourage the young men. Uh, I don't know now today. Um, I'm, I'm just going towards that direction. That similarly, encourage the young men to be self-controlled. Verse number 7. In everything, set them an example by doing what is good. In your teaching, show integrity, seriousness. <laughs> In your teaching, show integrity, seriousness. Oh, how I would love to get it also in another version. I see that, how that verse comes out. But in your teaching, show integrity. And there is also seriousness. That as you, you do that, if you show integrity, if you show seriousness in the work of God, commitment to the work of God, you will not make a lot of noise about it. You will not use your own human energy. By setting an example, you are a book. You are a letter to them. They will read you and they will do as, uh, as, as you are doing. Because and, and, and as you are doing, you are imitating Christ. So they will be imitating Christ through you. Hallelujah. Wow, this is wonderful. Apostle Peter also had some, something. No, not just for the youth. Also for the shepherds. For the shepherds. For the servants of God. For the pastors. For them that are looking after the souls. Of, of, uh, of the bride uh, of the bride of Christ. And he said, uh, Apostle Peter said in First Peter chapter number 5, verse number 2 and 3, he said, be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve. Now, hear this. Verse number three. Not loading it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. Praise the Lord. Being examples to the flock. I believe what we are, we, what we are here, most of us, uh, what we are here, uh, those of us uh, that have have been under the, the servants of God uh, here, Bishop and Reverend, uh, for quite some time. Uh, you'll find that you begin doing things the way they do things as far as the word of God is concerned. Uh, why? Because they, are, they have set an example. And even as they set an example, you want to emulate that because you believe and you read in the word of God. That is the right way to go. So you'll find out that the way uh, you, you, you would wish to tackle situations, the way the servants of God would wish to would tackle situations. You, and so because you know that that is the word of God, that's how they, they do it. And you believe in their leadership. You believe in their message. You believe in them and in their discipleship. You believe in the power of God that they believe in. You tap into that. So that's why you'll find yourself doing things the way they are doing. Uh, uh, sometimes it's not, it, it, it's, it's by default. You just find yourself doing things in a similar way. And at times you might find that they, you, without uh, really purposing uh, to say that I want to copy the way Reverend speaks or I want to copy the way Bishop speaks, without uh, necessarily intentioning that you will find yourself in your talking you find your you are just you are just talking the way they talk in, or in a in particular situations you find yourself handling things exactly the way they handle and and yet they have not told, told you that handle this why because you have learned as uh, from an example and and that's why you'll find in some places uh, in not in some places people will behave the way their leader is. Why? Because they are learning from their leader. So if their leader is not uh, leading them the right way, uh, they will uh, staunchly go that wrong way that they are going. Uh, you know, it, it's just, just like uh, the, in early childhood development, uh, we are told that uh, children learn by observation. They learn by imitation. We are children of God. We also learn like that. It does not matter whether you are old, but 
uh, uh, if you are living under a spiritual authority that by, by age could be uh, younger than you, but by, by spiritual maturity, God called them earlier and God has taken them, uh, he, has, he has taken them further or because of their gift and, and the authority that the Lord has given them and the anointing, you will find, uh, you will find that you, you, you live, you live according to the way they are going, the way they are, they are handling things. So uh, this is what uh, Apostle Peter told the shepherds, that you should not lord over the, over the flock, but set an example. So setting an example is the most powerful thing that you can use as, a, as, a, as, a, 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 as an instrument. I don't want to call it a weapon. As an instrument or as a method of leading people, leading by example. And that's where uh, it all came from, the, the servant leadership came from. The, the, it's because a servant leader is a leader who is leading by example. It's not a boss uh, who sits and waits for things to be done. And this is why Apostle Peter was saying. So setting an example, the way Paul set an example, he set an example of living the right, uh, the right way, living the gospel, and he saw the Thessalonians imitating him. He saw the Corinthians imitating him. He encouraged the, the Philippians to imitate him. He encouraged, in, in his letters, he encouraged them, and he also encouraged them to also be examples, to be role models, the right role models. Hallelujah. So therefore you realize that whatever small thing you do, somebody is watching you, somebody believes in you, you have to be careful. Ask yourself, whatever I'm doing, is it a true representation of Christ Jesus? That wherever I am, wherever I'm walking, in, uh, I'm walking is this where Christ would be happy uh, to see me walking? Uh, uh, and so the Thessalonian church took up this uh, mantle and, and they lived, they, they emulated Paul, they read Paul, we are letters to the world, we are read by many, we are read by everyone, and so we have to be read in the right way, and we will not force people to read us in the right way, uh, but we will, we will show them by example. Hallelujah. And so... Uh, Apostle Paul has applauded them, uh, and in that uh, verse number six, uh, towards the end, in the in the second part, he has talked about the way they received uh, the message, even in suffering. They, uh, even in suffering, let me just read there as we finish up that verse number uh, six. That for you welcome the message in the midst of severe suffering with a joy given by the Holy Spirit. Here. It is important. And maybe uh, remember this church, all the, uh, uh, all the descriptions about these churches in, in chapter number 17 of Acts, as we said in the last session. In chapter number uh, 17, Acts chapter number 17, and specifically from verse number 2, four, two to 4 there, uh, the way there was a lot of hostility, the way there was a lot of persecution, uh, the way even Paul was chased away, and he was, uh, he, he was welcomed by Jason, and Jason also, uh, the, the people went for Jason, and Paul had to be let go. And so Paul notes that they welcomed the message, even in that adversity. They welcomed the message, and they did not just welcome the message because it was a message, but because it was with a deep conviction of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit was working in that gospel. And that's where now joy comes in, that they welcome the message with joy, even in sufferings. So this is the, not the joy that depended, depended on convenience of situations. No, this joy was just brought by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit. In other words, the Holy Spirit was with them throughout, even as they continue uh, 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 being nurtured in the gospel, they welcome that word of God. They welcome the message of God positively. Verse number seven. And so you became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. Now, uh, what we have been talking about, 
that Paul had shown them an example. And Paul is congratulating them because they are, they are imitating him. Now, it did not just end there. They imitated him. They emulated him. They lived. They took him as an example. But then they also duplicated that life. There was a, multi, um, a multiple effect, uh, a multiplication effect that now they were reproducing a copy of their own. And if you trace that copy, it comes up to Paul, it comes up to Jesus Christ because ultimately Paul had said that imitate me as I imitate Christ. So he had, he had imitated Christ and that was being replicated, duplicated as it goes on and it, it had a multiple effect. So the Thessalonians were a good model. They became a model. They became a, an example worth emulating in Macedonia and Achaia. As we had seen, uh, uh, Macedonia was one of the provinces in, uh, uh, in Greece. Greece was divided in two provinces, Macedonia and Achaia. So, and these two provinces... Remember, Thessalonica was just in Macedonia, and uh, we, we already looked at the location. But then we mentioned that this city was not just, not only commercially uh, strategic, but also divinely placed. And this is why the church of Thessalonica had to grow. This is why the church of Thessalonica had to be vibrant. This church had no other way other than growing. And through this, they grew and they showed an example, not just in that province. For example, uh, uh, we, uh, before the new constitution, we had western province, eastern province, uh, northeastern and all that. And now, look at, uh, let's assume uh, that, uh, that, 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 is, uh, that province is like one of the provinces. But, but then remember these ones were bigger provinces because that, that was a big region. But then the effect of the Christianity of the Thessalonian church was witnessed. The example, the evidence that these people were transformed, had been transformed, was seen not only in that province, but also in the other province. And so in that, in that uh, whole region of Greece, they, there was an, they had seen them as an example that there was an effect. There was a multiple effect. There was uh, evidence. Uh, and there, there was uh, a strong message. There was such a great explosion that a single city, a church in a single city, brought such a great impact all over the nation. Hallelujah. And this is what we have to live up to. This is where we are supposed to, so that as long as we are living, emulating Christ, imitating Christ, we will not struggle. The gospel will go. The gospel will, will, will continue multiplying and multiplying and multiplying. As long as we live as ambassadors of Christ Jesus, then the gospel will continually uh, multiply and go on and on and on uh, to other parts. That's how the gospel spreads. Spreads like bushfire. You do not have to have to, uh, uh, to struggle too much. So long as you, you are available, so long as you live as an example. So the biggest thing that we have to do as a Christian is live as an example. Other things, vita vingine vita piganwa too. This is what we are learning from this Thessalonian church. That having uh, imitated Paul, having imitated Christ, they also became examples. They became models to be imitated by all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. And remember that verse number seven, if you read very well, that verse number seven, let me just read it. And so you became a model to all the believers. Not that. All the believers. This means this, uh, these people uh, were powerful. Powerful not just in, not in weapons, but powerful in living a life that was an example of Jesus Christ. Something that we should ponder, ponder over, something that we should be able to emulate, something that if we want to have to be effective in our neighborhoods, in our cities, in our 
in our regions, in our counties, in our towns, in our nation, Kenya, as a church, we should emulate Christ. We should imitate Christ. Others will imitate what we are imitating. Somebody said that for some people, you are the only Bible they know. So they read you every day. Whatever you do is what they read, and they believe that is the gospel truth. So are you being a true Bible, or you are being a false Bible? Or you are being a diluted Bible? Or you are being a staggering Bible? Or you are being a stagnant Bible? The Bible is a living word. The Bible has the living word of God. The word of God is not stagnant. The word of God bears fruit. Are we bearing fruit? This brings us to bearing fruit. Through the fruit of the Spirit of God. Are we bearing fruit in our actions, in our deeds, in our commitment? Are we bearing fruits? That fruit you will bear when others see you, what you are doing for the Lord. They will also begin doing a similar thing. And that's how uh, there will be, it, it becomes like the, 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 the multi-level marketing strategies. But without a lot of strain, without a lot of uh, pain, but of course with the, the sufferings in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. But then what you have to remember is, remember it was by the enabling power of the Holy Spirit. Because Paul had already mentioned in verse number five that it was not with simple words. It was not with, uh, as, as we read somewhere else, it was not just with flattering and convincing words, but with a deep conviction of the Holy Spirit. So what you have to do, seek the backing of the Holy Spirit. Seek to be driven by the Spirit of God. Seek to be driven by Jehovah God. And when you are driven by the Holy Spirit of God, you will bear fruit. Because you cannot bear fruit without the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit who resides in you. And when he resides in you, the evidence will be seen. You will be an example. You will be a model. You will be a person to be emulated. Verse number 8. Verse number 8 says, The Lord's message rang out from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, your faith in God has become known everywhere. Now you see. Now it is going beyond. It's no longer, it's not just no longer in, in Thessalonica, it went to Macedonia. Not just in Macedonia, it went to Achaia and the whole Greece. Not just in Greece. Now Paul is saying, your faith, God, uh, your faith in God has become known everywhere. This faith was so powerful that it was now known all over, all over now. It was not just restricted in a particular region. This is how powerful being a good example and believing in God can be. Just, uh, no wonder they say, actions speak louder than words. People might talk so many things. People might speak so many things. But are they living that word? Are they living, what is their lifestyle? That is why, that's how the church will be powerful. Many times we have cried and said, oh, the church is not respected. The church is not honored. That's okay. That's for them. They should know that the church should be honored. But then as a church, as brethren, as a brother or a sister in that neighborhood, is your lifestyle worthy being respected? Is your lifestyle worthy being honored? Is it worthy of the gospel? Is it showing a good example? When, when, when people come and fight on the altar, when the church is taken, uh, when, when the, the various factions of the church uh, take each other or take one another to the court, and they take one another to, to the court because of leadership wrangles, because of a piece of land, because of a particular project, because of a particular finances, and you are taking it, maybe, and maybe even that judge is not born again. Tell me, what example? Or what example will that judge see even as he deliberates, even as he handles your case, or as she handles your case? Will that gospel, the gospel you preach, will it be effective to that person? Will it be effective to the lawyers that, you are, that, that, are, that, that are serving you? Praise the Lord. And that's why 
uh, 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 the Bible talked about that before you, you go, you take one another to, this, to the courts. Why don't you sort it out? Why don't you talk? Why don't you handle it the Christian way? Why don't you agree? If you serve one God, where is the power of reconciliation? Where is the power of wisdom? Where is the power of handling things with wisdom? That uh, the wisdom of Solomon, that Solomon handled it and it did not end up badly. It, it ended up well in the wisdom of Solomon, like in the case of the two women. Can we handle that as a church without necessarily uh, washing our dirty linen outside there? And when we wash that dirty linen outside, who will respect us? You as an individual, you are in a family, and you want that family to, to receive the Jesus that you are preaching. What lifestyle are you living? What example are you giving? When, whenever there is something, whenever there is a dispute, how do you handle that dispute? Do you handle that dispute by, pu by saying, I'm putting down Jesus and I'm picking up anger? When there is a dispute uh, because of land, do you take, it, do you take sight? When there is a dispute between maybe even mom and dad, between your, your mother and your, 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 your dad, how do you handle that? Do you handle that with the wisdom of God? When there's a dispute be between your biological brother and your biological sister, how do you handle it? How do you advise? What wisdom do you apply? What example do you, do you give? And even as you are giving an example, for example, if you are married in that family, and maybe there is a, the, 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 the marriage problem between your brother and your sister-in-law, between your sister and your brother-in-law, there are problems. Do they look at you as an example? Or are you the one who always beats your wife? Are you the one, maybe you are a wife, are you the one who always beats up your husband? And because your husband is afraid, uh, he, he wants to watch over his dignity, he just suffers. Pole, 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 pole. Anaumia pole, pole. Muchana kukiuliza nini kilitandeka? Unaanza kusema kulikuwa na vitu zilikuwa zinaanguka huko hata sijui zilikuwa zinaanguka wapi. Kumbe ni kugongwa uliko unagongwa. Wewe dada wakati unagonga mume wako, wakati unagonga eh, eh, huyo dada wewe ndugu, wewe je, wewe ni mfano ambao unaweza kuwa emulated na wengine? Unafanya wakati mwingine wewe ni ndugu ambayo umeokoka lakini umechapa mke wako mke wako anaanza kukua na, na, na anaanza kulazimika kununua vile vitambaa kama buibui sio kwamba ameamua ku, kutembea hivyo lakini ni kwa sababu alama zimejaa huku mpaka sasa anajifunika tu hapa peke yake na wakati mwingine huku kuko black akiulizwa ni nini anaanza kusema sijui ni sunburns sababu hataki kukwaibisha Lakini ukweli ni kwamba you are not living as a good example. How will you preach to them? You are a brother or you are a son, you are a sister or you are a daughter in a family where maybe your parents fight. What do you do? Wakati baba anapigwa na wewe sababu unapendelea mama sana. Je, wewe unatafuta rungu? Unaanza pia wewe kugonga? Unagonga pia babako? Ama wewe ni dada kwa sababu unapenda baba sana? Na baba naye anaanza kutandika mama. Je, wewe unachukua rungu wewe umeokoka lakini unasema yeye unajua mama anakuanga na nguvu nyingi sana. Acha nisaidie dadi kugonga. Huyu mama amesumbua baba sana miaka nyingi. What do you do? Are you living as an example? Are you emulating Christ Jesus? Can people emulate you as a good example wherever you are? Are you an example to the younger sisters, to the younger brothers? What example are you giving? That is the only way to preach effectively. Hizi zingine sa ingine huwa zinakuwa ni PR peke yake. Ruka vile unavyotaka. Ruka madhabauni, toa sauti zote. Anzia baraton, ishia soprano. Ukie, u, peleka rhymes zote za mistari ya Biblia pale. Ni sawa, lakini unaishi hiyo mistari. Amen. Praise the Lord. Je, unaishi hiyo mistari? Ubiri kuhusiana na generosity kabisa lakini wakati unaubiri kuhusiana na generosity je wewe mwenyewe ni generous Ubiri kuhusiana na self control lakini wakati ambapo kuna vitu je una behave kama mfano mzuri self control kwamba unaweza heshima wengine do you consider others first before you Paul said that they have imitated me 
Iwapo tungelianza kuimitate tabia yako, tutaimitate tabia gani? Tuimitate tabia yako yote. Tutaimitate ku matusi, kuongea ku, ku, kutusi watu. Tutaimitate nini? Tutaimitate uchoyo. Tutaimitate ulafi. Tutaimitate masengenyo. Hallelujah. The church of Thessalonica proved that it is possible to emulate true servants of God and indeed emulate Jesus and the end product is you will be emulated by others kuna wengine hutawafikia ukienda kuhubiri lakini wataona jinsi unavyoishi watauliza wewe tumekutana na wandugu ambao wame kupitia kwao wapendo wamekuja kanisani kwa sababu tu hawa ndugu jinsi ambavyo wanajiendesha jinsi ambavyo wana handle maneno wanaulizwa hicha chenu iko wapi wanakuja wakija wanaona huo ndio mfano upo na hivyo ndio tunaendelea kuhubiri na ndugu yeye akija siku moja siku mbili siku tatu anakuwa convicted na anahubi, na, na anaokoka sio lazima kutumia nguvu bwana Yesu asifiwe haleluya yes So the Lord's message rang out from you not only in Macedonia and Achaia your faith in God has become known everywhere and 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 and, and Paul goes on and he says therefore we do not need to say anything about it Matendo yao yalikuwa yanajiongelea Their actions were marketing them their actions were marketing their faith in Christ Jesus Waswahili wanasema chema cha fanya nini? Chema cha jiuza kibaya cha jitembeza si ndio? Angalia sana kama unajitangaza sana, badilisha strategy. Unajitangaza sana wewe mtumishi wa Mungu, wewe ndugu, wewe dada unajitangaza sana na matokeo hayapatikani. Badilisha mtindo. Maybe it is the highest time you begin preaching by using yourself as an example. Praise the Lord. Eh hey. So Paul testifies that the impact of this church was even beyond the two provinces of, Ma- of, of Macedonia and Achaia and that through the faith of this church that God was known everywhere this was such an effective vibrant and resilient church strong in faith take the example of Abraham Many 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 thousands of years many many hundreds of years later on we still talk of the faith of Abraham in God one person he has impacted nations why why do you mbona unajidharau wewe tu hiyo imani yako na wewe kukutembea kama mfano mwema you can impact so many widely and even through generations And so Paul talks about the positive reports uh, that came from all over because of the good work that they were uh, they were doing and even says in verse number 9 that for they themselves report that kind of reception yale matendo yao ile imani yao ile bidi yao kupenda Mungu kwao kusimama katika nyakati ambapo na mahali ambapo kulikuwa na hostility vile ambavyo tuliona katika Acts 17 that reports Uh, about what kind of reception that uh, Paul were given they, they the Thessalonians welcomed warmly with kind reception they gave a kind reception to Paul and the servants of God as we saw and we saw that Jason being one of the uh, active participants in accommodating uh, Paul and uh, his fellow servants of God and so such deeds and this uh, this somebody mmekuwa tu na ye, within three weeks na ni mtumishi wa Mungu so this shows how warmly they are how how they they were positive towards the gospel so it was worth mentioning and then he says that they tell how you turned to God from idols to serving to serving to serve the living and true God Now those actions that kindness 
that vibrance, that resilience, that uh, emulating of the servants of God and, and, and therefore emulating Christ Jesus, living as an example, was so powerful to communicate that these people are surely transformed. We say that this gospel had the power to transform. So it was evidence. Their commitment and their, uh, their, their example, their giving of example, was so powerful that anybody could have known who you mutu kweli amebadilika. How watu kweli wameachana na idolatry. So they told of how they had turned away from idolatry, turning to God, serving the living true God. Sikuna mutu alisema kwamba muta aliimba kwamba utanitambuaje kama nimeokoka. Ni kwa matendo. Kando na kuongea mingi. Kando na kusema kutoa ushuda mrefu. Ushuda mrefu wa maneno ni mzuri. Lakini matendo yako lazima tuone. Tuone mfano ambao unaonyesha. Hapo dipo tutajua. And so all this was proof that for sure the Thessalonians had been transformed from idol worshippers to God's true worshippers. And so uh, some main things that Paul uh, mentions here even as we go to verse number 10 that and you see it is a continuation of verse 9 and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead. Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. Let me read again from verse number 9. For they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. They tell how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead. Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. Three things here as we finish. Three things that are very critical, central, and should be at the center of the heart of a Christian. Number one, even as you confess and profess that you are born again, for the Thessalonians, they turned, they showed evidence that they had turned away from idolatry. Idolatry was what they used to do before the God of Israel was preached to them. They departed from the ways of idolatry. Wewe ni nini ambacho uliku unafanya kitambu? Idolatry gani ulikuwa na kitambu? Je wakati uliokoku uliachana na hiyo? Number two, serving the living, the true living God. Baada kusema kwamba umetubu, baada kukonfess, umekatu wapa, sasa nimeokoka na sikia tu mzuri na ngojea kuenda mbinguni. It is beyond that. Serve God. Mutumikia mungu, hata yesu akasema, wacha mwana wa adama, atumikia mungu wankati kungali mchana. Saa hii kungali mchana. Serve God. Use that gift. Use what the resources God has given you to serve God. This is what the Thessalonian church did. They were serving God. Spreading the gospel. Preaching. Being a good example. Preaching in word and in deed. Number three, waiting for the coming back of the Son of God. Baada ya kuokoka na kuachana na maisha yako ya kitambo. Baada ya kuachana na ila idolatry yako ya kitambo. Na unapo mutumikia mungu, it does not end there. Yes, uh, heaven inanzia hapa. Kwa sababu sasa eternity kondani mwako. But then, jua ya kwamba, Kunayo, kunako kurudi kwa bwana wetu Yesu Kristo. There is the coming back of Jesus Christ. There is the rapture of the church. Don't just sit there pretty. Yeah, I've, 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 I'm born again. I'm preaching the gospel. Oh yes, that's okay. I, I now just have to enjoy life. No. Ple preach as if he's coming tomorrow or the next minute. Plan as if we will... He will tarry. So it's not just a matter of being comfortable. I'm serving God. Uh, I'm spreading the gospel. I'm going for missions. I'm, I'm visiting children. So, yes, thank you. That's not enough. But be aware that no one knows the hour. No one knows the day. He's coming back. Be prepared. And prepare the church. Prepare the bride.
This is what the Thessalonian church was doing because we have seen, as he has said, that and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, and Jesus who rescues us from the coming wrath. So the Thessalonian church exhibited all the, the three things above. This is why Paul was talking about them and even saying that they were an example. They were, they were, others were imitating them. Good reports were coming. So as we have said, it's not just enough to be born again, but the above three things have to be at the center of the heart of a Christian. And so knowing that, and, and, and we have got a responsibility to show the world that it is only Jesus that can rescue us from the coming wrath. The coming wrath from God, that is the judgment, the final judgment. It is only Christ Jesus. This is the love we have spread, we have to spread. This is the gospel we have to spread. So it is in this, and, and remember, it is in these two letters of uh, Thessalonians that Paul uh, has intensively talked about the returning of Jesus Christ. He has talked about the rapture. He has talked about the, 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 the returning of Jesus Christ. He has talked about it. So we better be prepared. My brother and my sister, kando na kuokoka, kando na kuishi katika wokovu, kando na kuhubiri vizuri, kando na kuinterpret vizuri, kando na kuimba vizuri, kando na kucheza vyombo vizuri, kando na kuenda kwa safari nyingi za huduma katika sehemu zote zote, e, katika ulimwengu. Asante sana, Mungu akubariki. Lakini, jua ya kwamba, jiandae, maana Yesu Kristo yuaja. Je, umeokoka? Ume, umeukoka na unamungojea hu yesu je uko tayari you wapo ngelipenda kuokoka you would like to receive him this uh, evening you would like, like to be prepared to look uh, uh, to be prepared so that the holy spirit will help you to be prepared say lord jesus i come to you i'm a sinner and i repent forgive me lord remove my name from the book of death and write it in the book of life. Help me, Lord, that I may fully turn away from my idolatry, that I may serve you, my true living God, and that I may be prepared for your coming, Jesus Christ. Fill me with the Holy Spirit, that I may walk in power. In Jesus' name, I'm born again. Amen. You are born again. You are born again. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Thank you because of this soul. Thank you because of this brother and this sister that are dis has decided to commit their life to you, Jehovah God, to be prepared for your second coming. Father, we repent because many times we've been complacent. We've not remembered that Jesus Christ, you are coming back. We repent because we have not shown a good example. We have not like been like the Thess Thessalonian church that imitated Paul, then also was a good example for others imi to imitate. And the gospel was spread everywhere. We repent because we have limited your gospel because of our selfishness, because of our lack of of being a good role model because of our idolatry, because of our staggering. We repent, Lord. We pray that you may forgive us. Help us that we shall be a good examples that will be worthy to be emulated. We shall be a good letters that will be read by everyone that will, re re will represent the kingdom of God well. We thank you, Jehovah God. Fill us with the Holy Spirit of God. We pray even for these brethren that have been born again, that Lord, may you keep them we pray that you may join them in this family, in the family of walking towards the coming of Jesus Christ, of working and serving the Lord's vineyard, of showing a good example, of preaching through word and deed in the name of Jesus. Cover us with the blood of Jesus, that the enemy will not take away that which you put in our hands, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for this one that wanted to give up. I pray for this one that wanted to give out the gift to exchange the gift 
just like Esau did, my father, and exchange his or her birthright. Lord God, I pray for them that Lord will open up their eyes that they will not lose their spiritual inheritance in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, them that are fighting Jehovah God and my dear Redeemer through that, they have gone away from your ways. I pray for the spirit of reconciliation in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for your church in Kenya. Jehovah God, the church also in, in Nairobi. Father God, that we shall be a good example that we shall be powerful not just in our talking not just in our walking not just in our running up and down not just in praising only but also we shall be powerful through living as good examples that we shall bring impact beyond Kenya just the way Thessalonians showed an example beyond Macedonia beyond Achaia beyond Greece and every Lord in the name of Jesus Christ we thank even because of the brethren that you've used as examples and have brought many to your kingdom we declare a blessing to them. Father, help us that we will continue multiplying. We will continue being fruitful in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Jehovah God. Thank you for your word. We pray that you will continue increasing in us. Empower us, Lord. Activate us more and more. Start us up that we will love serving you. We will love dwelling in your presence. We will love reading your word, studying your word, going deeper in deep interpretations of the spirit of God and walking the talk walking the word, living the word in the name of Jesus. We give you glory, Lord. Them that have been struggling in these areas, Lord, may you enable them in Jesus' name. Expand your church, Lord, in Jesus' name. Let there be fruitfulness. We bless you, Lord. We give you glory. We thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for joining us. God bless you so much. Please continue joining us on Facebook, Covenant Renewal Altar Ministries. Join us on YouTube, Covenant Renew Altar. God bless you. The servant of God, Bishop Dr. Fidelis Oboge, will, come in, will be coming to you live on Sunday in the uh, first service and second service. On Tuesday, we have got prayers right here, praying to God. On Wednesday, we have a worship service online. Please tune in on this page and on YouTube. God bless you so much. Thank you for joining us. Continue joining us. From Covenant Renew Altar Ministries, we love you so much. Shalom.